Action running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. It is 13 after the hour. I am Eric Erickson. This is Atlanta's Evening News on WSB. The phone number, 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. Yes, there is a severe thunderstorm warning for Cobb, DeKalb, and Fulton County. It expires in just about a minute. Uh, But then there's another severe thunderstorm warning for DeKalb County itself uh, that continues on for the next 15 minutes. Uh, There is a lot of rain on the east side of 75. Um, Whether you are north or south of the city on 75, there's a lot of heavy rain to the east of 75. There is more coming down from North Georgia. The heaviest stuff right now in the Druid Hills area inside the perimeter. There's also very heavy rain in the Conyers and Covington area. Uh, And there is rain headed out towards the Monticello area and the McDonough area. There's rain coming in uh, to that area. Uh, In Fayetteville, there are some pop-up showers there as well as Sharpsburg and in the Noonan area. Um, Everything else, if you're headed up 75, it's 575 that has terrible rain. North of Ackworth, you start getting into the rain on 75, and then 85 is, is rain and drizzle. Now, that being said, we have a lot of ground to cover today, and I'm coming back at 10 p.m. tonight uh, for two hours, the reason being the President of the United States has gone to Singapore uh, to meet with Kim Jong-un, the dictator monster of North Korea, uh, trying to do something. The President wants to get a win there. This comes on the heels of him leaving uh, the G7 summit in meltdown mode. It was not helpful for the United States to be leaving um, Canada as he did for a, a singular reason, and that is... Uh, propping up uh, Trudeau in Canada. I mean, he's a lightweight, and yet the President of the United States has bolstered him on the world stage by attacking him in the way he did. Uh, And, of course, we need to talk about Jamie Dupree tonight, Um, and we will get into that uh, momentarily. But before we we get into any of those, I want to go to the G7 situation. The President wants to allow Russia back into the G7. The other Western allies uh, have said no. They're, they're not a they're not a fan. The reason the Western allies do not want Russia to come back is because when it was the G8, the reason they expelled Russia is because of its invasions of Georgia and the Crimea uh, and and several other areas in Eastern Europe. Uh, the incursions they made were enough for the Western allies to say we've got to stand in solidarity against what the Russians are doing. And the United States is the country that led the movement to push them out. Uh, So for the Americans to want the Russians to come back in uh, really undermines the unity the G7 has shown against the Russian incursion into Eastern Europe. You've got Eastern European allies who are looking at us like, well, come on, man, these guys want to take us back over. And they, they've all got concerns against the president. Um, it, my big concern is I think there are valid reasons that the president has raised for allowing Russia to come back. If you are the G countries, you, you are essentially the, the G7, the G8, you are the countries with the biggest, uh, d- the biggest GDPs in the world, save China, which is a communist command and control country, not a free market. Russia still to a, a large degree has a free market. And these are the the eight big economies. Uh, It makes sense to have the Russians at the table, as the president said. But there are legitimate concerns for having thrown them out, given their propensity to invade their neighbors, who are democratic countries. Now, that being said, the biggest problem with what the president has done is he has attacked Justin Trudeau on Twitter uh, rather savagely, actually. Uh, And his advisors going on TV saying there's a special place in hell for Trudeau. Uh, the Canadian Prime Minister, y'all. I'm no fan of Trudeau. I, I don't. I don't really care. Uh, what I care about, though, is that this bolsters Trudeau in Canada. Uh, Justin Trudeau is not as popular in Canada as the American media would have you believe. And the conservatives in Canada have a real shot at making inroads. In fact, they had uh, elections, off year elections in Canada, just a few weeks ago. And the conservatives in Canada made tremendous gains against the Trudeau administration. The problem is that now you've even got conservatives in Canada coming out saying, hey, you can't treat our prime minister that way, you jerk. 
And so now you've got the conservatives in Canada. The president of the United States had the opportunity to beat Justin Trudeau and, and cause him to be defeated at the ballot box. And instead, what he's done is cause conservatives in Canada even to join the liberals in Canada to rally toward him. That's that's not smart politics. That that helps someone the president doesn't like. It elevates a lightweight to a higher position on the stage. It gives Canada moral authority they otherwise wouldn't have. Uh, it, it was a bad move on our part to do that. Uh, and now we've got all the other Western allies who are looking at thinking, you know what, maybe we need the G6 and not have the United States either. Some of you would be happy by that. The problem is when it comes to negotiating free trade agreements that help American farmers and American small businesses, we need to be in the with those countries. And the president seems to be stuck in this 1940s, 1950s economic mentality that's really not working well. You have probably seen the Dollar Shave Club ads. They're actually really awesome, uh, really, really funny ads. I was one of the original Dollar Shave Club members when they came out. I mean, I totally sold into the bought into the ads. Really, really a, a cool shave club idea. It delivers everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. Uh, you name it. They've got shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, hair gel, even a wipe that'll leave your bottom feeling tingly clean. Dollar Shave Club is more than just razor blades. It has all these other things, and there's a great way to try a bunch of Dollar Shave Club's products. For just $5, you can get their Daily Essential Starter Set. It comes with Body Cleanser, One Wipe Charlie's, their Amazing Butt Wipes, their World Famous Shave Butter, and their Best Razor, the Six Blade Executive Six Blades. Keep the blades coming for a few bucks more a month and add in shampoo, toothpaste, anything else you need for your bathroom. Check it all out at dollarshaveclub.com slash Eric. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K. It is 56 after the hour on the nose. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff going on, including this this Soledad O'Brien shaming Jack Dorsey, the Twitter CEO, for daring to eat at Chick-fil-A. Really a, a ridiculous thing. I, I want to spend some time on this when we come back. And uh, did you know that according to Lucas Films and according to the Hollywood Press, Star Wars has toxic fans because some people were not nice to a star Wars actress. Some people have been harassed and it's true that star Wars has some very passionate fans. Many of whom have been driven over the edge uh, by what Lucasfilm has done of late with star Wars. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy probably needs to be out of a job, but of course they're not going to uh, push her out of a job because she's a powerful woman in Hollywood and diversity. Yay. Uh, but the numbers give lie to the fact that there there's not a toxic fan problem essentially they're saying that star wars fans are a bunch of bigoted racist misogynist uh white boys in america except star wars is tanking internationally uh the last jedi has performed horribly overseas as has solo uh it is not listen i, I i've got friends of mine who will uh, hear no criticism of Star Wars, um, but they need to hear some because bad things are happening over there and they're blaming the fans. It is 40 after the hour. I am Eric Erickson. The phone lines are open and the phone number is 404-872-0750. 1-800-WSB-TALK. I need to, well, I'm going to rearrange, I'm going to put this here. It's one of those fly by the seat of my pants night. First of all, reminder, I'll be back at 10 o'clock to give you the play-by-play from what's happening in Singapore. Uh, you'll be the first to know if there's a war. <laughs> you should see people melting down on social media. Oh my gosh, she's going to get us nuked. I have no idea. Um, I want to talk about Jamie Dupree. Uh, Jamie Dupree has not been on this radio station in two years by voice. He has been here every day, uh, but he he hasn't been able to speak. Jamie has what is called tongue protrusion dystonia. 
Uh, essentially, it means his tongue isn't working correctly. It pops out of his mouth when he's trying to talk, and it causes problems speaking. Um, here he is trying to speak. Um, yeah, let's see. Doctors say messages from his brain aren't reaching his tongue. A neurological disorder so rare, there are no specialists who treat it. The pen in his mouth helps him speak, but the reporter in him has not quit. He still does interviews. He feeds us audio. WSB Radio News Director Chris Camp says Dupree also covers Congress via Facebook, Twitter, and Cox Media websites. He does, and I, I'm trying to get to the right clip so you can you can hear him uh, speaking. And Jamie has a very hard time at this point being able to speak. He has to speak with a tongue in his mouth. Um, I am working to come back hard and he is working to come back hard and he after getting some media attention for the situation uh, jamie dupree was able to connect to a company called siraproc they're a scottish company and they have been for the last two year year or so sifting through his archived audio. I mean, the the cool thing is that Jamie has so much audio of his voice and the way it is supposed to sound. And so they have essentially turned his voice into a text-to-speech application. So Jamie is now back on WSB. Jamie can now give you the news again that you have for so long depended on Jamie for, uh, and this is just delightful. And I, I want to play you some audio of this. Uh, Jamie edited this. He, he put it on his blog at WSBRadio.com. And I, I want you just to listen. You will hear Jamie's voice. So when you turn on the radio and hear me say, I'm Jamie Dupree in Washington. It really is me behind those words. But it will be a computer-generated synthesis of my voice. So it sounds someone... It, it sounds somewhat like a computer, but it's also Jamie's tone, and it's Jamie's words, and it's Jamie's reporting. Um, it is. It, it's 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 amazing, folks. The twenty first century in technology um, is fantastic, and my producer is telling me I apparently said he speaks with a tongue in his mouth and with a pen in his mouth next to his tongue. That's you can go to Jamie's blog at wsbradio.com and you can see the details of this and how he has talked. Charlie and I were actually up in DC uh, a couple of months ago and in we're in the the Cox Media Group office and Jamie was there to say hi and it is a it's a very one-sided conversation. He does have to speak. He has a keeps a basically a sharpie that he puts in his mouth and he can force himself to generate words, but it's a difficult process for him. And now he's able to do this. It's fantastic. Uh, really is fantastic. So, folks, here on out, you're going to be hearing Jamie Dupree back on WSB. Um, it will be computerized synthesis of his voice, uh, but he will be typing the words and uh, the computer will be playing them. And that's magic as far as I'm concerned. So happy for this news. It is 54 past the hour. We still have all of this rain in the area. Um, it is really a, a, a line of rain from Chattanooga down 75 uh, to Midtown, and then it kind of fills up the area between 75 and I-20 on the southeast side of the city. Um, generally, uh, over I-75 south of the city, you're you're okay. You, you got some showers uh, nothing terrible, and it's starting to thin out along I-20 now. Um, I-20 headed towards Alabama is okay. Uh, scattered showers on I-85 um, south towards Columbus and Alabama. Uh, when we come back, we need to talk about what Jack Dorsey did or did not do. But right now, I, I need to ask how many of you are dead. It, it is an important question you may not realize. You may not even know that you're dead. I mean, and I'm not talking dead in trespasses sort of sort of stuff. I'm talking actually physically dead. How many of you are physically dead? Uh, because I don't know if you know that. And, and, and me saying this may cause you to die. With great power comes great responsibility. 
but I'm going to say it. Y'all, net neutrality is the law of the land again. I, I, I know, I know. You, you, you could be dead now because I said that. Net neutrality is back, and, and the left progressive said people will die. People are going to die because of the tax cuts. People are going to die because net neutrality is, is gone. <gasps> okay, la resistance. Y'all, the internet, I, I don't know if you, you realize this or not, but, but it hasn't changed today. Hasn't changed. No, nothing has changed. Your, your broadband is still there. It is not slow. It's just as bad as it was yesterday in many cases. Uh, nothing's going to change. Oh, but it could, Mr. Erickson. It could change. It could change. But you see, this is the problem. One of the problems with the regulations is that they were essentially preventing it from changing. We were essentially going to freeze the evolution of the Internet so it could not change in ways that might be beneficial because of the regulations. You know, there's never been a situation where a company has slowed down, slowed down the slow. Listen to me, slow down the internet, and and punish customers. It, it hasn't happened. It was all hypothetical fear mongering, and you're not dead. It's Eric Erickson here, News 95.5 AM 750 WSB, the phone number 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. Uh, for the second hour of our program, remember I'm going to be back at 10 because the, the Singapore stuff, there really ain't going to be any news coming out of it until then, and I'll be broadcasting live from 10 to midnight and taking your phone calls tonight about it. I want to talk, though, about Chick-fil-A, your favorite restaurant. Jack Dorsey uh, is the CEO of Twitter. He is also the CEO of Square. If you've been at a small business that uses an iPad or something for uh, even some cash registers, um, you probably have seen the the Square Reader. It's a little white square that's connected to the iPad or, or the iPhone that you swipe your credit card with, or you can use Apple Pay with it. Uh, Square. Uh, it, it really helps small businesses. It's a very favorable thing for small businesses to use. And Dorsey is also the CEO of Square. One of the things that you can do with Square is called Boost. And that is you can go to a business and you can earn points uh, by going to the business uh, and using a Square has a cash card. It's a like Apple Pay. Um, or Android Pay, and you can use it and you can get points. And Jack Dorsey screenshotted that he had uh, boosted Chick-fil-A. He screenshotted the, his phone. It had a push alert that his boost had gone through. And Soledad O'Brien, formerly of CNN, tweeted at him, uh, that's an interesting company to boost during Pride Month, Jack. Hmm. Y'all, she has over 800,000 Twitter followers. I only have 200,000 Twitter followers. I know when I do something like this, if I were to tweet something like this, uh, it would grab lots of attention from lots of people. Soledad O'Brien did this to shame Jack Dorsey for eating at Chick-fil-A. And, of course, what is Jack's beta male response? Well, he totally baited. You're right. Completely forgot about their background. What is their background? What, what is their background? Well, okay, let me give you Chick-fil-A's background. It, it's a company that gives all of its employees off on Sunday. Every employee is guaranteed a day of rest. It plays. It, it, plays, it pays its employees above minimum wage across the country. It offers insurance for employees. The family is the Kathy family. They're a Christian family, and they support children's ministries for children with developmental disabilities. Uh, 
They host camps during the summer for children with disabilities where the kids get to play outside and camp and do things they might otherwise not. They're a huge sponsor of foster and adoption programs around the country. Profits from Chick-fil-A go to those companies. But of course, that's not what Soledad O'Brien is upset about. She's upset because the Kathy family in the past sponsored organizations that support traditional marriage. They used to. They don't anymore. Now, I will tell you, gay rights activists have come after me this afternoon for pointing this out and say they still do. They still do support what they support are conservative organizations. They, they don't support explicit organizations explicitly championing traditional marriage. They support conservative organizations, some of which have outlets that do champion traditional marriage. And I guess that is the point is that Chick-fil-A and, and Chick-fil-A doesn't. It's the family that does the, the, the Kathy family that does. But you're not allowed to do that anymore. And Soledad O'Brien is a journalist who has devoted her entire professional career to discussing division and unity in the United States and race relations in the United States and how can people live in harmony. And she's essentially throwing down the, the flag here that she doesn't want to live in harmony with people unless they agree with her. I mean, she's say, shaming the CEO of a company because he dared to eat somewhere. Believe it or not, a chicken sandwich is not political unless you make it political. And that's what she's doing. And, you know, I, I, I've i got to say, even the, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution has a headline today that, that um, Dorsey engaged in some level of controversy. He didn't engage in controversy. Soledad O'Brien engaged in controversy. Jack Dorsey didn't do anything controversial. St- the headline of the AJC right now, Twitter CEO creates controversy with Chick-fil-A tweet. He didn't create the controversy. Soledad O'Brien did. I, I'm I in most media outlets across the nation have taken that 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 he did something controversial. What did he do? He ate a chicken sandwich and he screenshotted that he had been to Chick Fil A during Pride Month. You see what all all of this is about. Ultimately, is that there's no such thing as an atheist. Now, I know some of you think you're atheists, but you're not an atheist. You may not believe in the God of the Bible, but you have a God. Everybody worships something. Typically, where you put your money is a bit of indicator of what you worship. And secularism has its own religion, its own, own sacraments, its own special holidays. Pride Month has become the secular version of Lent. And basically, Jack Dorsey is being shamed by Soledad O'Brien for eating meat on Friday. That's what this is. During the high holy month of pride, he dared to commit a sin and was public about committing that sin. Because secularism has its own sins, and one of those sins is is eating a Chick-fil-A is a sin, particularly during the high holy month of pride. You can't do that. All of this, it is a religion. Secularism is a religion. You can say there's no such thing as God, but you have a God. You have an idol. Man's mind is a perpetual factory of idols. We all have, we all generate idols. And pride is an idol. And Pride Month is is a holiday for secularists who have adopted religion and, and echo the real religion. And that's what all of this is about. You will be shamed. You will be made to care, someone once said. You'll be made to care one way or the other. And Jack Dorsey is being made to care that he cannot eat bigoted chicken sandwiches during Pride Month. Y'all, it is not a healthy society that that politicizes everything. And we're told all of the time, it's you bigots on the right who are doing this. No, it's it's the bigots on the left now. Soledad O'Brien included engaged in public shaming because someone went to a restaurant that offends their moral compass during their holy month. That's not a society that can last long. If you're struggling to come up with a present for your dad for Father's Day, I've got a great one for you. It's actually a really cool website called Mancrates. Mancrates has hand-packaged gifts for every type of dad. 
There's, for example, there's a knife making kit. There's a whiskey appreciation kit. There's a, I shouldn't even say kit. They're crates. They're wooden crates. They actually come with a crowbar for you to be able to open the crate. If you go to my Instagram page at EW Erickson, you'll see. Um, you can get them for chefs. Uh, you can get them for hobbyists, hunters, fishermen, um, dads who like barware, dads who like sports, you name it. It's it's really got gifts for everyone. I really love the concept, and I actually like the products. I've actually got a bar set of pint glasses and coasters engraved with my name for man crates. Really handy, useful stuff your dad will love. Get your special Father's Day discount today at mancrates.com slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K. It's a limited time offer. It's only for Father's Day, so you got to go today. That's mancrates.com slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K, mancrates, M-A-N-C-R-A-T-E-S dot com slash Eric. you got to go to mancrates, folks. Father's Day is coming up. Get your dad something really cool and unique and with a crowbar. It's 26 after the hour. Eric Erickson here. The phone number 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. It's 27 after the hour. I actually, y'all, today experimented in the kitchen. And I made browned butter toasted pecan bourbon ice cream. It was everything you would hope for and more. So I browned the butter, so all, all the little the, the milk solids that they brown, and then I put in heavy cream and milk and sugar and salt, and I had five egg yolks with some of the sugar in there, and then did the whole where you scoop out some of the, the hot liquid and put it into the eggs to bring them up to temperature, and then you put it all back in, and then I added uh, vanilla paste, uh, not the liquid, and then I added bourbon. And I put it in the ice cream churn and I had toasted some pecans and I added the pecans in and it was fantastic. And I didn't feel bad because at lunch today, I literally had lettuce, chicken and boiled eggs. So exciting for lunch today with, with Vidalia onions. Uh, Charlie's giving me a hard time. He's just jealous because he's not here to eat the ice cream and I'm not going to make him any of the ice cream so he can deal with it. Now, when we come back, oh, the Supreme Court issued a major ruling today and the left is in total meltdown. It is 39 after the hour. I am Eric Erickson. This is Atlanta's Evening News. The phone number is 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. Friends, the Supreme Court has issued a huge ruling today. Um, The left is fairly well in meltdown over it. Um, They shouldn't be, but they are because... Uh, The way the political left in the United States of America operates today, uh, they have to convince you and everyone else that Republicans are systematically trying to block people from voting. Let me give you the fact scenario in in this case. Ohio, there's a, a... a federal law that says the failure to vote in a single federal election shall not be grounds to purge voters from the voter rolls. What Ohio does, what the state of Ohio does, is if someone has not voted in a federal election, they send a letter to their house and say, you didn't, you didn't, vote in a federal election. If you don't respond to this letter, then we're going to take you off the rolls. You need to stay up to date on where you live. And someone sued Ohio and said, look, you can't take someone off the voter rolls if they haven't voted in a federal election. And that's what you're doing. 
And Ohio's response is we're not taking people off the rolls for failure to vote in a federal election. What we're doing is we're using that as a trigger to send them a notice. And we're, it, it is their failure to respond to the notice that is taking them off the voter rolls. And the Supreme Court today said that's constitutional. That states, because of voter fraud, <gasps> voter fraud exists, people. Because of voter fraud, states have a vested interest in ensuring the integrity of the election. And because they have a vested interest in ensuring the integrity of the election, if voters fail to comply with notices, then they can be taken off the rolls. Other states have re have removed people after two federal elections, some of them without notice. At least Ohio sends a letter, and of course the New York Times rushed out this afternoon, well, it's mostly minorities who are affected. You know what? It is, there's a greater income correlation than there is a correlation to race. Are poor people affected? Yes, poor people are affected because they can't take off work to go vote. They can get absentee ballots. But all they have to do, and, and this was the Supreme Court's thing, all you have to do is respond to the notice in the mail and say, yes, I'm still here. That's all you have to do. It's a minimal burden to ensure that you continue to, to stay active on the voter rolls. But people are outraged. People are outraged. People are going to be out. I mean, look at the Jack Dorsey situation, folks, in Soledad O'Brien. Look at that. People are outraged at Jack Dorsey for eating at Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is the most successful fast food restaurant in the country. And people are upset with someone eating there. It's just ridiculous. Let's go to the phones. David, you're up first. Welcome. Hi, Eric. Good to hear from you. You too. Uh, wanted to say hello and thank you for all the great things you do. I'm a, a lawyer up in Rome, a constitutional lawyer. have traveled all around the country to different state legislatures. I'm glad to see the Supreme Court today give a lot more, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, discretion to the states to do the things they need to do to run things. One of my questions for you, I don't know how familiar you are with the what we call the Article 5 movement. Very familiar. The ability, the great to hear. Well, I'm very involved in that and working. We've got 28 of the 34 required states signed on to um, drafting a balanced budget amendment uh, since Congress won't do it. And would love to hear um, whatever your thoughts are on that. We need six more states. We're moving forward. We've got some... Uh, Mike Huckabee has just signed on to our board, and we're moving forward. And uh, uh, would love to would love to hear what well, your thoughts are on that. Yeah, David, thanks very much for the phone call. The so here here's I I have an overarching concern on the on an Article Five convention, and that is that uh, just like the uh, there is a real fear, and I think it's a legitimate fear given the way the left plays that the. Uh, just like the convention to fix the Articles of Confederation was essentially hijacked, transformed into the uh, Constitutional Convention, uh, that this could be too. You're, you're, you all agree to just go with one amendment, um, and suddenly they come back and they've they've written a whole new Constitution. It's a progressive love fest. That, that's a concern. But 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 y'all. The constitutional process has been hijacked in the Supreme Court already. I mean, it's like we're 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 play. Pay it. We're fighting back with both of our fists behind our back because the left just runs to court and they amend the Constitution through the court system without actually ever actually going through the process. Might as well try. I mean, listen, if three quarters of the state, you, you go to a, an Article 5 convention, you pass an amendment to the Constitution to balance the budget, but then you also pass one that mandates we all have to have gay marriage. Every one of us has to have a gay marriage. Let's just say that makes it out of the way. You know, if three quarters of the states pass that, you're already screwed as a nation. I mean, you're already you're already down the creek without a paddle. If if they pass some progressive love fest out of one of these things and three quarters of the states agree with it, you're already toast. What you have to do is make sure everything that passed out of that has a time limit that this must pass within five years. 
And then if it doesn't, you don't have to worry about it anymore. It's not like the, the ERA, which is like herpes. It keeps coming up over and over and over and have, a, have an ERA flare up. And that supposedly had an expiration date too. Um, but you need one that's absolutely clear now with these things. We don't need another voting rights amendment or, or, or not a voting rights, an, an equal rights amendment or nonsense like that. But a balanced budget amendment would be great. It really would. We need a balanced budget. Congress is bankrupting us. It is 56 after the hour. Believe it or not, President Trump is getting criticism from some of his major evangelical supporters today. And it's significant criticism. Um, They're upset that he's not bringing up human rights and the persecution of Christians with Kim Jong-un in the summit in Singapore. Uh, Tonight at 10 o'clock, I'm going to be back uh, broadcasting live throughout the Cox Media Group of stations over what's happening uh, with the president going one on one with just their interpreters in North Korea in in Singapore with Kim Jong-un of North Korea.